Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to a sales update. So without further ado, we shall get on with this video. Uh, I've obviously got 10 sales for you in approximately 10 minutes today. And also I've put my shop on holiday mode recently. So I will be doing a separate sales update um, to basically share with you uh, what sells when your store is on holiday mode and on extended dispatch. I thought that would be quite an interesting sales update to do as well. So uh, this is a vintage Barugo, I think you pronounce that, F50, um, obviously 1 to 24 scale die cast. Um, it's a Ferrari. Now, this is the only item in this sales update that I actually can't even remember where this came from. Um, and obviously if you've been reselling as long as me or you've been reselling even longer um, Then you'll obviously have this you'll come across this yourselves uh, Where like things just completely elude you and you you get things in and maybe you don't list them for a while And maybe the they sat at the, uh, the bottom of piles of shame or maybe you list them and then completely forget them And then they end up selling like this one has and you just do not know where you got them from, you don't know what you paid, you don't know, you're all in disarray about the item because you had, didn't even know you've had, uh, you, you got it, so, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this one, I accepted a £10 offer, the only thing I could tell you about it is I know I've had it for quite a while, um, probably over a year or about, about that anyway, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming I paid a couple of quid for this, so I, I obviously accepted an offer of 10 quid. Um, and hopefully there's some profit in it, but I really don't know. I can't see myself paying like five or ten quid for this So there's gonna be some money in it, but with this one. I just thought right. Let's just get it out uh, For ten quid because I know I've had it for quite a while obviously plus my postage and uh, that'll do I don't know whether this was in my cabinet for a while actually as well And then I then I took it out of my cabinet. It might have been in my cabinet actually um, next was this Lego R3D5 green Astromech droid at uh, 8 99 This was just from one of the Lego job lots that I'm now in profit on. Really, really good job lots. They were solid job lots. Um, I did pay quite a bit of money for them. I actually, um, I think I had like two or three job lots in total and it was like five, six hundred quid. Um, but there was some amazing stuff in there. But I've got quite a few uh, unopened sets that I put away for an investment. Um, well, I say put away for an investment. I just kind of sat on them for a rainy day. Let's call it that. I wouldn't say it's quite an investment, but because um, I don't because I don't really think we're going to go much higher as an investment anyway um, because I've been retired for so long already. But they're just kind of like rainy day fund. But these minifigures, I had so, so many minifigs in there, in these job lots, and most of them have sold, but they, you know, there are quite a few still listed, and they just tick away, and they're just so lovely just to whack in a jiffy bag. Uh, obviously, this one went for nine quid, so just the amount of time to list it and then whack it in a jiffy bag and label it up, it's so little time for, you know, nine quid. I'm more than happy with that, so yeah, really, really happy with that one. Uh, next, obviously, some sad news here with the news that uh, Barry Chuckle, or uh, obviously Barry Elliott is his real name, uh, he passed away a week or two ago. Uh, obviously, it was his funeral yesterday, which was on Friday, the eight, uh, not 18th, 17th of August. Um, and obviously, me being a child around sort of, you know, early 2000s, um, obviously, I was heavily into Chuckle Vision. It was going strong then. Um, I would say kind of the glory years of Chuckle Vision, Vision were like late 90s to, you know, early 2000s. So um, it was very much going strong. And I remember coming back from school specifically um, as I got a little bit older, um, going around my grandparents' house and watching it around there. And my grandma and granddad would watch it with me as well. And it's just got that humour, that sort of uh, raw physical comedy, that slapstick. Uh, that just makes the whole family laugh, uh, laugh you know, and um, I was really, really sad when I heard the news, um, and I I completely forgot I even had this listed at that point, and then I thought to myself, oh, I've, uh, after I had uh, obviously heard about the news and processed it a little bit, I realised, oh, I've got a ChuckleVision DVD uh, listed, and pretty much as soon as I said that, it was within half an hour it had sold, because obviously the... Um, interest was back for it. I didn't have time to put the price up, but I'm more than happy just to let this go at the price I got um, and let it go to a, to another ChuckleVision fan or someone who just wants, you know, to watch a few of their, or, or obviously this stage show here. So, um, 
you know, I'm really happy that someone's got that and someone can enjoy that. And it is really, really sad news. I was, re I was really hoping to uh, meet the Chuckle Brothers at some point. So it's, it's like sad for me because you know, I can't do that anymore, and it's really, really sad for Paul, because obviously he's lost, he's lost his brother, that basically, you know, at any time a double, one person in a double act dies, I always think it's very, very sad, because obviously they're with each other for so long, and obviously uh, these two had a career of over 50 years together, so it's really, really sad, but um, yeah, so that's sold, and I'm glad that obviously that's gone to another fan, uh, next is uh, this Cadbury's Freddo Frog uh, cookie jar. I remember saying at the time I picked this up that maybe I paid a little bit too much for this. I wasn't sure. I thought it was worth a little bit more than it is. I thought it was more like 25 or 30 quid. But I did pay a fiver for this and I only got uh, 19.79. I mean, I suppose it's still, you know, a good little bit of profit. But if I did see this again, I'd be wanting to pay maybe 2 or 3 quid rather than the 5 quid. As I say, I thought it might have been worth a little bit more, but still, some decent profit there, and I can reinvest it into something else anyway, so that's fine. Uh, Mason's Ironstone Mandalay, I think you pronounce the pattern. Um, oval ceramic sort of serving plate, meat plate, that sort of uh, style of plate. Quite nice. Um, I accepted an offer of 16 quid on this. Paid a few quid in an auction job lot if I broke it down in terms of uh, sort of a per piece price, probably about two or three quid. Um, and yeah, quite happy with that. 16 quid plus my six pound postage. I don't know whether this did cost me 6.49 with Hermes or whether I, I did sneak it in under the two kilos. Maybe I did. Um, but yeah, still quite happy with that one. That was from one of my most recent hauls, so it's nice to get those first few sales from a haul and get some of the money back. Um, next, again, something from my most recent haul. Uh, these always seem to go well for me now. You'll probably, you, the title might be cut off a little bit um, from your view um, on the video because I actually, in OBS, I uh, stretch the screen out a little bit. Um, but basically, um, I'll read out the full title for you. So I'll put here, Vintage Large Metal Copper and Brass Water Jug Ewer Planter Pot Country Kitchen. Now, do you see that title? It's very, very heavy with keywords. It's very packed. Um, and that's why I sell these regularly and I sell them quickly for a half decent price. Now, this one isn't even very good. This one's quite standard considering I've got better ones than this. And as you can see, it's only about 26 centimeters, well, a little bit more with that, obviously the top of it there being about 29 centimeters. But it's not like a really mega big one. Um, and it's not like really, really desirable. Obviously, it's got this hammered effect and stuff, but it's quite standard at the end of the day. Um, but I still got obviously a firm 20 quid plus postage there. And uh, the reason these go quick for me and the reason that, you know, I can still charge a decent amount for, for what it is, is because of the keywords. I firmly believe that because I always pack these items with keywords. A lot of people like to use these as planters or as like sort of um, in their sort of country cottage or in their country kitchen. They like to just have these on, on, on display and obviously we like to have them as planters. So... If you put those keywords in there, you're broadening your audience and you're broadening, broadening the search volume that you're actually attracting to your item. So, yeah, definitely um, keywords are very, you know, they're not talked about that much for new resellers. Like, a lot of people will talk about, you know, list, 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 list for new resellers. But I think keywords are just as important. Like, you could... You could list a thousand items and you could get them done really, really quickly. But at the end of the day, if they're like, you know, one word titles and not very good photos and stuff, they're probably not going to attract that much attention. However, if you have, if you fill most of your characters in your title with good, strong keywords, you do a good photo, then even just doing 10 listings might be better than doing the thousand because. Uh, those 10 will probably sell pretty quick and for better money than just doing a thousand terrible, terrible listings. So, um, yeah, definitely quite. So, again, it goes back to that quality over quantity kind of thing again, but not necessarily with price, with the quality of your listings. Um, so, next, we'll leave Vintage Royal Crown Derby, um, Amari style. 
so I'm at Twin Handle Bowl and Jug. I couldn't find these anywhere on sold listings and I was very, very annoyed. I did quite a lot of research into these and I couldn't find the pattern number. Maybe if I had done even more research, I might have been able to find the pattern number. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a time versus money thing. And uh, obviously, there's only so much time I can spend on single items. I can't be sat there for an entire eight hour day just researching one item. Um, but I did spend, you know, a good you know, sort of 30 minutes to an hour on these, researching them, trying to look at different websites and stuff. And I just, for whatever reason, I couldn't find the pattern number. Maybe I was looking in the wrong places. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I couldn't find a pattern number. It wasn't underneath or anything. Now, normally it is with these, so I don't know. Um, or I couldn't find, like, the pattern name or anything like that. But I knew it was kind of like an Amari-style pattern with, obviously, the gold kind of gilt colour in there. Really, really nice items. I knew that they were going to be worth something, but there was none on solds either. So I kind of had to go on my gut. So I went for 35 quid plus post. And they went within a week, I'd say five days, something like that. So maybe I could have touched a little bit more. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I could have got close to 50 quid on these. Maybe, you know, 45 or something like that. But anyway, I'm still happy with that. They cost me, they were basically an entire job lot of stuff, including masons and loads of other ceramics. Um, I think there was a couple of Royal Crown Derby teapots in there that I've yet to list, actually. Um, and I bet you there, I mean, they, they were like Amari style as well. And I bet you there about 30, 40 quid a pop as well. So, uh, yeah, 30 quid for a load of different stuff, plus the commission, obviously. So these basically just... Um, pay for the job lot or just about pay for the job lot and then the rest is pretty much profit so yeah as you can see 34.99 plus postage but i was very annoyed that i couldn't actually find uh the pattern for these um but obviously as you can see i just put a mari style pattern in there um they still sold so obviously i did something right um next was this uh, ww world heavyweight uh, Attitude uh, Champion Wrestling Belt. I got this um, in a huge job lot of WWE stuff from a fellow reseller, actually. Um, and this would have cost me two or three quid in the job lot, probably less than that in terms of a um, per piece price. Um, and yeah, I, I got 19.99 for that, so I was more than happy with that. Um, I did test it, it was working cool. Um, and yeah, quite happy with that, nice little sale there. Next was uh, something I'm in profit on from a job lot I'm in profit on. Regatta Stormbreaker Green Size 32 Wind Raincoat. Um, I don't really pick this sort of stuff up any anymore, but obviously this just kind of remained with a haul that I got a while back. I'm, I'm not saying I won't pick up clothing in future, but you know, it goes back to that sort of selling what you love, and I just don't feel like I have that love for clothing, so. Um, it's just kind of not for me. If it's for other people, then that's brilliant, uh, because obviously it takes all sorts of people to make up a market. Um, if everyone was just selling the same things as I sold, there wouldn't be a market there. So it's always good that different people sell different things and get pleasure in selling different things. But for me personally, clothing isn't the thing I get the, the most amount of pleasure from. But as you can see there, I got £10.35 plus my postage for this. It wasn't necessarily a really amazing coat or anything, just quite a standard one. So yeah, that's that one. And then finally was this Vintage Britons 1983 uh, Magirus Do's Ivico Cement Mixer. Just go back on to, I'll go on to the main picture there. Um, so yeah, I actually accepted a lower off on this because I've had it hanging around for a while. I accepted 18 quid. I did actually shoot quite high at 24.99. Well, not really high. I thought maybe I would have to accept an offer of around about where I accepted my offer. So, um, but I did just shoot for 24.99, just seeing if I could get that. Um, but yeah, so I was happy to accept 18 quid plus postage. Comes from a diecast job lot from the charity shops that I'm now in profit on. So I'm more than happy with that. Uh, nice little sale there. Obviously, Britain's is a make in the sort of diecast world to be looking out for. It's quite a quality make. I mean, not all of the pieces are of really high quality, but there are some really nice pieces that they've done, especially the vintage pieces as well. Um, so yeah, this was quite a nice little sale. 
and I'm happy with that one. So that will wrap up the sales update for today, guys. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Don't forget to like the video as well. If you haven't as well, also click that notifications bell so that then you'll get notified of when I create another video. And finally, don't forget to check that uh, scrolling text bar for any and uh, all information relating to the channel. So I will see you in the next one. See you very soon, guys. Thank you.